When you receive your resample kit, it's going to come in a large box like this. And when you go to open it up, there should be two smaller boxes. Um, the smaller box is going to have your media inside of it, uh, whether that's SDA for fungal growth or TSA for bacterial growth. They'll come in sleeves that are, shouldn't be uh, open, just like so. Um, also inside there is going to be a silver case, and uh, that's the actual viable air sampler. Before taking any of the equipment into the clean room, you should always uh, wipe down the entire surface of the shipping container um, with alcohol. Uh, it's really important to be aseptic when carrying stuff in and out of a clean room just so you're not cross-contaminating anything. Also remember to wipe down the sleeves of media before taking them into the clean room. Inside the resample kit you also have this piece of paper that is a uh, chain of custody and this is to show the micro lab exactly what locations were sampled at how much volume, um, project name, some of the basic info. But this is the sheet that you guys are going to follow the main sections I need you guys to fill out is going to be the sample date, the number of people in the room, and down where it says relinquished by, have you guys sign that, date it, and give the time the sampling what took place. So once you guys have entered the ante room um, and garbed up properly, it's always best to take the sampling equipment and the media over to a ISO class 5 hood in this case we're inside a biosafety cabinet and when taking stuff into the cabinet always remember to alcohol and wipe down again um, to set up a prep area inside the resample kit there's also um, a couple pamphlets about how to sample and also on uh, information on shipping uh, the other little bag is your electrical tape and some alcohol swabs. There's also a charger in there in case you guys receive an air sampler that's dead. Once you're inside the hood, you should prep a staging area, um, basically just alcohol and laying down a pad, setting up a couple alcohol pads to wipe down the sampler head with. When opening your media sleeves, it's important to use aseptic technique and be very careful not to cross-contaminate anything. Once you've unwrapped the media, um, pull out exactly how many you guys need.
Turning on the air sampler is pretty simple. There's a power button underneath. And when it turns on, it's going to run through a couple different set modes. And then it's going to come to a starting screen. And at this point, you can, you're going to want to set it to the volume that you're supposed to be sampling at. Um, in this case, you're probably either going to be doing 500 or 1,000 liters. So you're going to go to the standard mode and click the up and down arrow. And that will take you to different set volumes. And in this case, we're doing 500. So once you get to it, you hit enter. And then that's going to take you to a start screen. So from there, you're all set up. Now when you go to load the media plate into the head of the air sampler, um, make sure to clean and wipe down the head really well. Just be liberal with the alcohol and soak it. Wipe it, wipe it down with the alcohol pad. When going to load the media plate into the air sampler head, be sure to use aseptic technique and hold the petri dish from the sides and it sits securely right up in those three prongs. When carrying the air sampler to the sample site location, be sure to carry it, hold it up above your head. That just prevents cross-contamination. Once you get to your sample site location, it's important to put it on a table or cart that is balanced. Go ahead and start the orange button. Uh, once the red light is blinking, it's air it's sampling. And make sure that your room or a hood is under dynamic condition. That's an important part of the test. Once the air sampler has beeped and stopped sampling, go ahead and aseptically take it back over to the hood that you're working in. When unloading the cartridge, go ahead and aseptically take off the head of the sampler, take your petri dish lid, and carefully place it back on and then take the plate out of the air sampler. Once you've completed the air sampling, make sure to aseptically take the plates over to your second staging area. This is where you're gonna fill out the rest of your chain of custody and label the plates on the underside. As you can see, we're numbering it and we're going to leave the A there for air sample and date it. Once you've labeled the sample, you're going to take the electrical tape that was provided and securely wrap the lid. Once you've labeled actual air samples, you're going to want to label and wrap your media control plates. That's going to be a positive control, so you can put a P on there and date it. The N is going to be for negative control. And these basically are plates for the micro lab to use for positive growth. You know, they're going to inoculate the plates to make sure that they're capable of growing and the negative control is to prove that you guys aseptically handle the media. Please double check the chain of custody to make sure you filled out the required spots. Go ahead and fold it up and you can put it into the same bag as the samples. Inside the resample kit, it should have came with a bag and a twist tie to secure the bag shut. If you guys don't have a bag or a twist tie, go ahead and use any type of Ziploc bag.
Also remember to put the electrical tape back in the bag it came with so we can send it back with the kit. Remember to safely secure the air sampler back into its case. Um, all the extra media that was left over, you can just toss. You can use the same box that the air sampler came in to ship back to the micro lab. Make sure that the case inside is secured properly. And there's two ways of shipping it back. The air sampler itself can either go ground or overnight with the air samples. It's important to get your air sample plates overnighted. Um, that way it reduces the chance of cross-contamination or damage in shipping or uh, just prolonging the incubation period. I hope this video was helpful and don't forget if you have any questions feel free to call us at any time.